hello everyone welcome back to my channel so today's video is a light elegance video i did this beautiful half plaid french half kind of shimmery i don't want to say metallic -y, beautiful color a lot of these colors are from light elegance's new winter collection some are a little older uh, from previous collections i don't say older older but from, from previous collections but stick around and see what i used um you guys know I love Light Elegance. It is for professional nail techs or people currently going to school to become nail techs or, you know, Cosmo students. So I'm going to start off by using the Speedy bit. And it is an aggressive bit. I say that with love because it is a bit that I want to take previous designs, gel polish, or take down the enhancements, enhancements with um, whether it's length or actual like getting prepared for a complete file down yeah so in some of these nails well, probably most of them i'm gonna be filing them pretty much all the way down because i want to have the nail bed i'm mostly concerned about the nail bed color so some may have other colors around the free edge area but for that french i want it to be the ideal pink color for her nail bed color so I was trying out some previous products for with her previous design. And so her nail bed colors, or the colors that her nails are built out of, are all various colors and products and stuff. So hence some of her nails being like a lighter pink, kind of clear looking, some of them being like a darker pink like this, some of them are another shade of pink, but that's why. It's my mom, also my guinea pig, my mom and my sister. I don't do, I don't try to do them wrong, but you know, I need to try out stuff on people sometimes, so they're here. So I have removed the gel polish, and I'm using this. I like to use it faster, so I'm using it at about 25 to 30,000 RPMs. Um, and say you could do 15. I don't, I recommend not going slower than that because. I kind of like elegance will say you could go 15 i kind of think it can make it too slow and you know we don't want it to be too slow because it's going to create more friction and can cause heat but i mean if that's a more comfortable space to you just make sure that you are lifting off from the nail frequently to help reduce you know the amount of friction and the heat um, any heat spikes well we call it heat spikes just where it's hot <laughs> on the nail um and now i'm taking the cutie patootie bit i use this bit double duty it starts the journey of removing the cuticle from the nail plate but it also pushes back that epinicium and um the flat part of it the tip of it does have those diamond burrs on it so it does exfoliate the skin while pushing it back it's a safety bit and next i'm using the the itty bitty bit and this is a diamond bit as well it has that nice thin shape it's a nice thin cone shape well it's a taper just like a tapered cone what would we call that i'm sure that's a very obvious word i'm not thinking of <laughs> so i'm using this to remove again even more so of that cuticle that's on the nail plate Excuse me, there's natural. Like I said, we have different layers of products going on. I know her nails look crazy. They're they're good. They're fine. You just have different layers of pinks and a fill and this and then clear and then what I just did and then all that going on. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just using this bit just, just to completely clean off everything. And this is also double duty as well. So we're removing the cuticle from the nail plate, but I'm also going over the entirety of the natural nail, just very lightly. This looks aggressive. I'm using this at about 7,000 RPM. I'm using it as parallel to the nail as possible so we don't create any rings. And, um, but it also helps remove shine and etch the rest of the natural nail. So I'm using the light elegance dot the led dot lamp ideal pink one step air bond light elegance tack and then i'm using the light elegance um cleansing cleanser liquid and um, i'm just using that on a nail brush 
and just dusting away and dehydrating, cleaning the surface of the nail, getting it prepared for what we're about to do next. So I allow that to dry, make sure the nails are kind of ashy looking. Then I apply air bond to the natural nail. Then I allow that to dry for about 20 seconds, 20, 30 seconds or so. You can go longer, but at least that long. And then I use um, my Elegance Tack. And then I apply that for the majority of the nail, especially like this nail had some lifting. She hit it, so I had some lifting on the corner. It looks like it's curved in, but it's just missing product. Um, so I like to apply this pretty much down on the enhancement. I just wanna make sure everything has great adhesion. Everything's good. So we apply that in light elegance tack needs to be cured in the light. So I cured in the LED for 30 seconds and um, then we're good to go. So I'm going right in to light elegance is one step. You could use Jimmy gel if you would like the ideal pink Jimmy gel. Um, it can be soaked off and you guys know plenty of videos I've shown myself using it as a base and I like the thought of it. So, you know, if for some reason a client can't come back, they can manage and spend some time using a hand file and filing down the majority of the nail. They at least have a layer that they can soak off. Well, I mean, these are my mom's nails. Even if for some reason society shut back down or whatever, she could still, I could still do her nails. So I'm not really worried about it for her. So I just wanted to go straight into Ideal Pink One Step. And um, the reason I wanted to use One Step is um, just brass tacks. It's a thinner viscosity. And sometimes I appreciate that. It has, you know, the strength, the quality, of course, of the rest of the gels that Light Elegance has. It's just easier for me to apply Sometimes, depending on what I'm doing, depending on what mood I'm in, and that's really a great part with gel. There's certain gels you need for, you know, specifically for certain circumstances, but I could have used Ideal Pink Builder here, and, you know, these nails were done weeks ago. They're still absolutely fine and great, so I just wanted thinner viscosity. I thought I could build the nails faster, um, which I could. I'm starting with, I'm doing it in layers actually so i'm doing a thinner layer and i'm applying a slip layer and i'm brushing it over the entirety of the nail it's a thin layer we apply it like polish then while that's still wet i take a bigger bead of that product and apply it on the nail you see i'm moving it from left to right kind of taking more towards the tip of it to kind of dance it around you don't want to move it this is sped up it looks really aggressive but you want to move it slow and not too crazy so you don't cause any air bubbles or not a lot of air bubbles so again i'm applying that slip layer it's the first layer we leave that wet and i always say it kind of peeps the scene looks out on the nail say hey we can go here we can go here don't go there it's not good over there and um you know just helps this bigger me bead know oh, what to do where to go what's cool what isn't cool <laughs> so the reason i'm applying this in two layers um, is one to reduce heat. The thicker gel is applied, the more heat that it gives off, generally speaking. And my mom has a little bit more sensitive nail beds. So um, I apply her a thinner layer first. And then I put it the light elegance um, dot, the LED lamp. It has a low power mode 120 seconds it starts off with a dimmer light um and then it increases in certain increments and that way it can begin to cure when the light is lower kind of steadily brings it up hopefully to avoid heat spike it does help immensely also applying this in a thinner coat helps as well um if you applied this really really thick and still put it in the light on that low power mode, you could still get a good amount of heat. It might not be as bad, but it could be pretty, okay? So keep those two things in mind um, 
when working with builder gel there's also other tips and tricks for heat spikes and stuff but we ain't gonna go into that so i'm just looking and i look at the nail at all different angles so you see me applying it um down the center and building that apex so i'm just looking from the left side right side down the barrel making sure it's how i want it and so once i cure that first thinner layer I'm going back again, I'm applying a slip layer as you see, leaving that wet, and then I'm taking another bead of product and I'm building that nail up and I'm making sure I get my apex wet where I want it, the opacity that I want, and make sure it's even. This self level so beautifully, it probably wouldn't be the consistency I would tell you to start at as a beginner. If you're doing shorter nails, I think it's absolutely fine. If you're doing nails this length, you might have some problems with it just being that it self levels pretty easily so if you're not comfortable with using gel it could take you longer and then you could have the product move in from left to right and over the edge way more than you probably wanted to if you're just starting out i would say a more medium viscosity in the light elegance range i think the cool gel viscosity is really good for beginners but you know i'm not trying to box you in whatever you want to try i think for various reasons a thinner viscosity and a thicker viscosity both can be detrimental to beginners in different ways so that's why i always say go for a medium it self levels it gives you the ease and lets you see the beauty of builder gel but it's not as difficult to work with with running in a thinner viscosity or trying to manipulate it in a viscosity that doesn't really self-level so yeah so i'm just moving this product around i've been liking to do an apex that's a little further back more of like the european style so that's what i've been really going for lately not super extreme some people do them really extreme um not too extreme but enough to get some nice beautiful strength i've been liking the look again it's not really extreme but you can really notice it but i've been finding that i just i just like how the nails have been lasting across the board with my clients more so so yeah and again we're not here for european and american apex lessons i'll just say that with the european style the apex is more pushed back in it comes to its apex <laughs> it's further back on the nail bed and kind of stems straight out from there as opposed to the american apex which kind of peaks or has its apex over the free edge area more so of the nail it kind of tapers back down a little bit not as much as you taper the um cuticle area but kind of on that same length same same wavelength the other you would taper down the european one slightly but it, it's it's different but yeah for those who who know that's what i've been doing lately <laughs> um so i'm just uh, doing this second layer and again this helped doing these two layers with that heat so so much and i'm just taking that product moving it where i want it dancing it around getting it down since i want that higher apex in the back i'm applying a bigger bead back there and kind of dancing it down it builder gel is really as easy as it looks and i see people in the comments like you make it look so easily you make it easily you make it look so easy and you move it down the nail you just dance it down and blah 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 and it's like you can too girl and you know even if you you know are just give it a chance okay give Bill or Jill a chance i promise you gonna like it just give it a chance you'll like it so i'm using light elegance the perfect file i've been using these lately i've used the flowery ones for years the same ones the disinfectable ones and i've been using these lately and i've really liked them i just have to season them more i don't even know where we got that term from as a nail community but also let me chime in and tell you i'm using the shaper bit from light elegance it is a cross cut style bit it's a diamond bit with those cuts in it to help relieve heat um but it is a diamond bit so i'm tapering it at the cuticle area and just refining the shape of the nail surface which it doesn't need much because we had a self-leveling gel which is another beautiful part 
Anyways, back to the actual hand files. There are 8,100 grit. I mean, one side's 80, the other side's 100. I find them both beneficial depending on what I'm doing. I shape the nails mostly with the 80 because it's more coarse and abrasive and easier to file with. And um, you do have to season it, which is kind of hard to tell you verbally, but if you're not familiar, it's where, because the edges of files can cut you. So you take another file and you kind of file the edge of the file. <laughs> so it's not, it doesn't come to a sharp 90 degree angle. You kind of curve it off or cut it off. Um, so it's not as sharp, but so that's my tip. I didn't really have to do that with the flowery files that I used to use. But besides that, they last absolutely great and I enjoy them. So I'm just going in and I clean up the underneath of the nail. Helps us get a nice little cute C curve, even if it's a faux looking one. We got that beautiful kind of higher apex towards the back. Beautiful C curve. Excuse my, my mother she oh i did not show this okay well let me t talk about this <laughs> i go in after i've shaped my nails and i finish file the surface and then i go back and refine the shape so i was just showing you that i always go back and do that so i'm using my elegance black tie white elegance just white these are all buttercreams the pucks and penalties that's the color that's on the one half of the nail toboggan time is a part of it Bunny Slopes is the base of that plaid color. And first base is a little added, a little detail as well. Then I'm using Anxiously Awaiting, which is a beautiful glitter, a part of their new winter collection. And um, this is like a rose gold with like a fuchsia magenta color in it. Beautiful. So like I said, I'm using Pucks and Penalties. Look at it, it's like a metallic -y, shimmery. It's a part of the new Buttercream winter collection. And yeah it's super cute feels good for fall and winter so i'm using my elegant stripey brush the block brush and then i'm also using the gel polish brush the first two brushes are from the selena ryden collection um and these are the nails just all clean and ready to go i use the light elegance nail cleanser on the cuticle brush like i did beforehand just to dust the nails off and get them clean and make sure there's no oils on the nails or anything. So I start off with a straight line. I didn't apparently like how I was doing it at first. So I just used the wipey and the um, My Elegance Nail Cleanser. One of their um, Pro Wipes, I believe they're called, the Lint Free Pro Wipes. And yeah, so I drew a straight line down the center as you see and then i'm just filling in one side of the nail with that color and i'm just getting as close as possible i'm gonna go in with um that stripey brush and clean up around the cuticle cuticle area just because it's hard for that brush to fit in when it's a smaller nail because it's the pinky but then i'm just only doing one half of it so i could have probably used a smaller brush <laughs> With that being said and you can apply this the thing with buttercreams they have very very great pigment and coverage um and you can kind of in a way select your coverage they have it i think it's called thick tropic is what you would call it it's a you get it it's a consistency when it's moved around manipulated literally like stirred it becomes a thinner viscosity which means it could kind of have um like a thinner amount of coverage so just keep, and that could be i mean a very good thing depending on what you're doing what you're looking for um so it's a it's a cool aspect of buttercreams but um i could have not manipulated it as much and got a little more opacity out of it i ended up having to do two coats which wasn't really that bad because once you drew the first line and filled all this in doing a second coat wasn't that bad so and i mean i'm never mad at doing two coats with gel polish when you're doing fine fine line work that's when you really want to have the pigment and whatever product you're using and I did use the buttercreams for the line work in the plaid because it does have such good coverage. Didn't manipulate the colors as, as much because the last thing you want to do is draw like 
the Eiffel Tower. And then because the product you use wasn't opaque enough, you have to trace back over it again. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. So no matter what you're using in life, when it comes to nail art, definitely try to look for a pigmented product that you can apply one time. You can draw one line and it looks perfect. It looks perfectly black, perfectly white, whatever you're going for. So that's going to save you a lot of headache. Because depending on the gel polish brand you use out there, um, some people, I mean, not so, I mean, I use gel polish as, you know, like a art paints, I would say, like to draw like designs, you know, and draw an art. Um, but if it's not opaque enough, you're going to have like thicker lines, like literally like 3D because you had to apply two, three coats and then they could be less clean and stuff. I'm just rambling on to tell you, you need good products when you're trying to get into nail art, good opaque products. Um, so I'm just repeating this process, nothing new. And I like to get my, everybody's different. My mother likes the tips of her nails to be colored with whatever's going on, um, a lot of clients don't care because it helps you get a cleaner shape, especially at the end when you, if you take a little hand file to it, if your shape has bulked up any, you can, you know, usually file, if, especially with stiletto, I mean, not stiletto, with coffin shape, um, you can generally go in and, you know, file the color off the tip and it'll give you your nice, beautiful coffin or square shape or tapered square shape back, um, and not really be too obvious, but, you know, some people, <clears throat> my mother, don't like that. So, you know, it's a challenge in balance. <laughs> so I'm just going in with the second coats. Again, it wasn't really um, that bad to do the second coat like this. And, um, oh, that's what I wanted to add. Okay, so... I did not capture myself doing the cuticle cleaning. Well, one, because I partially forgot. Because, <laughs> um, you know, my mom comes and we chat and we're having a, you know, I kind of forgot. So I didn't capture it on the camera. I did use the Buffy bit for my elegance. So right now... You're seeing some rough cuticleage. So in the end, off camera, I got it together. Again, used the Buffy bit. Kind of dusted that dry skin off and got it nice and together and cute. Um, and I used, well, that's towards the end of the video. Let's talk about what's going on now. Okay. But I did use the light oil against cuticle oil. Okay. <laughs> so I am using, I believe it's a bunny slopes. Again, I believe it's a part of the new... Um, the Light Elegance's new Winter Buttercream collection. I'm using that in that stripey brush and I'm drawing half of a French. Now, the half of your French can be whatever type of French you or your client would like it to be. I'm going for a more, a slightly more deeper French, but in, I wanted to be able to showcase the design very well. So it's not as deep or as long of a French I guess we consider the nail bed part being the long part it's not as long as I probably would go normally if somebody asked for a deep French but I still want to make sure that that angle is kind of steep too so it looks nice and you know cute and feminine and, you know so I um still want to make sure it's not I hate like an old school French like, if you drew the French to, like, match or mimic where her natural nail bed would be, where her natural kind of French line would be, where a free edge starts, people do Frenches like that in the year 2021, and I can't. So, am I judging you if you do that? Yes. That's it. <laughs> no, I can do whatever. You know, art's art. It's just not my favorite thing. So, I'm trying to find a balance between, you know, making this like I said a you know the French 
actual part taken up more of the nail to display the um plaid design well but not making it look you know kind of old school and up too high <laughs> so i'm just drawing this on and um i think i only needed one coat of this if i was polishing this over the entirety of the nail i'd probably do two coats but it's such a small space and um just the opacity of the buttercream was very very good so because a lot of it is going to be covered combined with that i didn't think there needed to be two coats done so yeah i'm just drawing all these fringes on in the meantime is that like a plaid emoji like a snowflake emoji what is our emoji today i don't know let's do a christmas emoji no matter what it is it don't it doesn't matter what it is we can do like a snowflake something wintery we can do you know any holiday this type of winter solstice type holidays you know it doesn't have to be on pc we can do holiday themed um yeah just give it give me emoji down below so we can get that i told you guys that's how we're gonna do it fair fair trade you give me a thumbs up and a comment a little emoji and then i'm gonna keep pushing out content because what it does is it helps interaction on my video and it tells youtube like hey people are interacting people like this so let's show it to more people so you know we need more people to see this so we can keep on doing this <laughs> and giving you good content yeah so thank you in advance i know you did it because you care for me um you know even look hear me out you can leave a crazy comment if you want it doesn't matter just you can leave the number three if you want 24 7 doesn't matter let's interact <laughs> So after I polish that half French, which is actually easier than doing a full French, honestly, I am creating our plaid design. Now, the thing with plaids is that there is no thing with plaids. They're really simple to do. They look intimidating. They're not. Just don't even worry about it. Um, they leave a lot. There's a lot open for design choice you can do opaque colors you can mix these colors with like clear uh, like top coat or base gel you could mix them and like sheer them out especially like a um, just regular like cream color um, you can do that and get different effects um, have some sheer colors that you mix with clear have some lines opaque um, you'll see people that will darken like where the colors, the vertical and horizontal colors cross. Um, and so don't, don't let plaid intimidate you at all. Don't you do it. It's simple, but it's, it's super cute. It's something that's simple and it, it does, it can look intimidating, but it's not so you guys know i always tell you have a reference photo something that is what you're trying to do i always say that if what you're trying to do is plaid to find a plaid shirt or a plaid something that is a really that if you're looking to do i was having my example of like a cow print pull up an actual picture of a cow or like a cow hide carpet or something like that on google photos or something and see what makes it look like it and then you know once you get that down then you can manipulate things you can do change the colors and make it a different way but once you understand what makes it look like it with plaid it's really simple what makes it look like it is just the layering of colors and kind of the weaving of it to do your first layer um horizontally the next layer when i say layer it's just a single line vertically and then do one up above or below that horizontally again you're making it look more intricate than it really is because it looks like 
wow these are both going you know horizontally but one's on top of the this line one's on the underneath this line the same line but it's just this simple so my biggest tip for plaid is to make sure you kind of alternate drawing your horizontal and vertical lines and i'm curing in between each one of these layers i just want you to know each one of these lines i'm curing but so you see how that color that vertical color toboggan time that kind of terracotta color you see that it's on top of that um kind of maroony shimmery color but it is underneath the white and now it's going to be underneath the black and um, then we're going to go back in with a vertical color, which is going to put all of it underneath, all the um, horizontal colors underneath. So that's going to give you your plaid look. Again, don't let it intimidate you. Find what you're trying to mimic. Nail that, and then you can start making up patterns of your own. And again, um, like I said, you could have mixed any of these colors or whatever colors you decide mix them with clear and see that do like one stripe with like a sheer black or take a sheer gel color um just throwing out ideas and do that and you can make it more like a traditional looking kind of plaid so yeah so i'm just taking and doing exactly what i told you guys i'm applying in different um thicknesses of the line some of them very thin some of them thicker so just mix that up however you want so now i am kind of deciding we wanted the outline of the french in a vertical line between the solid side and the plaid side so i couldn't decide so right i'm doing both of the nails two nails differently just to kind of see and this does take time i mean not as much time as you probably think but it kind of helps. Some decisions you can't make till you see it like on the nail. You know what I mean? So I apply it wet. I don't cure it or anything. Then I just take a look and see what feels right. And um, then we decided. So I'm going to be using my Elegance's Flat Matte and Super Shiny for this look. So this is a mixture of finishes as well. So... We decided to do kind of a hybrid between these two options of using the glitter um, for the middle line or that shimmer. I think it's called first base is this other color is kind of like a neutral shimmer. It's a beautiful color as far as if you're looking into getting into buttercream. It's a beautiful, beautiful color, perfect for weddings and just it's beautiful. So we decided to outline the French in this color and then add a line through the plaid with it and um then do the center vertical line as the anxiously awaiting that glitter color so now what i'm doing because we want the plaid side to be matte and the other side um to be shiny and i'm applying super shiny on the solid side and I'm applying flat matte on the other side. So I apply those. Go ahead and wipe them off with the cleanser. I'm sorry I didn't put in clips of that. And then I'm going in and using super shiny on top of the line of the French in that line through the plaid. Because it is like a um, pearlescent kind of shimmery color. I wanted that to still pop. And that doesn't pop when it's matte. So... I went ahead and applied um, the shiny top coat over those lines to make sure they still pop. So then I'm using Anxiously Awaiting, that glitter color, and I'm applying it over the vertical line, that separation. And then we decided to do a horizontal, a horizontal line with it through the plaid side. So then I went ahead and cured that. And then I'm applying the super shiny on top of both of those lines as well because we want our glitter glitter to be shining. So I'm repeating these steps and I find I found on the other hand I realized that there was an easier way to do this aspect. I should have applied the glitter gel anxiously awaiting the vertical line first and then 
did my cured that then did my matte top coat on the plaid side cured that and then I could have applied the super shiny top coat over both the solid side and the anxiously awaiting glitter at the same time hopefully that makes sense so you know getting nail processes together is also an important part of doing nails nail art nailing nail enhancements if you will is to know what order you need to do things to get the best look or the easiest way to do that because some things you just can't achieve if you do one process before the other so a lot of that depending on what you're doing is thinking about that what is the best order for this to go in if you can build a nail you can polish a nail you can draw but sometimes you need to know which order to do certain things in to achieve the look so i say that to say i could have done that better and saved a little step and some heartache <laughs> so i am kind of learning i decided that i wanted to do this first before the center line because i could cover like the ending of that horizontal glitter line with a vertical one just to make a better transition and um of course again i'm curing in between each of these processes each of these layers so it's a lot of in and out the light a lot of them doing flash curing five ten seconds in the light pull it back out i uh, normally would do both hands at the same time back and forth but because i was recording and how tedious this was and how many little steps this was it was easier for me to do just one hand at a time um but like i said normally i'd have you put your left hand in the light give me your right hand switch 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 like that so definitely do that this process would be so much easier if you drew everything one at a time for all 10 nails so i applied the top coat over the anxiously awaiting the shiny and this is our final look it's very seasonal christmas appropriate and like i said most of these colors are from the new light elegance buttercream line and they have a the winter one and they have a new winter um gel color and glitter collection which i did i think a live video on a few weeks ago so i think you can go back and look on that if you want to see the colors um close up and in more detail but definitely check them out um i'll leave links to products down below and again you do have to be licensed or a student cur currently going to um school for manicuring specifically or i believe cosmo students or maybe even teachers instructors as well um definitely check them out and um don't forget to thumbs up subscribe leave our emoji we're doing a holiday emoji so don't forget to do that and i thank you guys for watching